Tonight, Apple gets its hand slapped again for not playing nice with kids. Google plays on the iOS and the peanut butter and the, and the Internet of Things has a new contact list. What does that mean? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show three for January 15th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 225,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. Last year, Apple settled a lawsuit over the unauthorized use of in-app purchasing in its App Store games, but that wasn't enough for the Federal Trade Commission. Today, Apple signed a consent decree to address the FTC's now two-year-old complaints that Apple didn't do enough to prevent children from buying currency or points inside apps and games with real money. Apple must provide full refunds to consumers affected by the confusion, at least $32.5 million to make good. Apple also has to change billing procedures to make sure that consumers are agreeing to in-app purchases before they're getting charged. In a memo to employees this morning, CEO Tim Cook called the FTC's move double jeopardy, but said that Apple would cooperate in order to avoid a long and distracting legal fight. Good news for those of us who don't want to choose between Apple and Google. The App Store just gained a new app called Google Play Movies and TV. It's exactly like it sounds. The app not only offers streaming movies to iOS for rent or purchase, but content can then be streamed to the TV via Chromecast. Couple shortcomings out of the gate, though. You can't buy any content through the app itself. Video will only play in standard def on the iPhone, although if you route it through Chromecast, it bumps up to HD. You'll also be limited to streaming over Wi-Fi and no offline viewing, at least not yet. It's a whole new world out there, one where you can register your smart toothbrush the same way you might register a website. Almost, anyway. This is the idea behind the wireless registry, which launched today, that the Internet of Things should behave like the Internet that we already know. Once registered, each gadget that connects will have a unique identity, which lets devices exchange messages with each other, sending and receive requests, that sort of thing. But unlike the traditional DNS system, devices on the wireless registry can interact without even having an Internet connection. It might be connected directly via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. A whole new world of proximity-based services might be possible from internet-based registration. So, registering your first device is temporarily free, get on that, but you'll pay $4.99 each year for subsequent names. Coming up, you can turn grandma into a robot and she can follow you around the house, but can she make you eat your broccoli? And next, Renee Ritchie from iMore is here to give us the inside talk, inside Apple, on that FTC fine. But first... Let's take a moment to thank 99designs for sponsoring this episode of TN2. 99designs connects people looking for great graphic design with a community of more than 225,000 graphic designers from all over the world. Whether you need a new logo or a mobile app or a business card or a t-shirt, you'll find the right designer at 99designs. You just tell 99designs what you need and dozens of designers from their community submit designs created just for you. You give the designers feedback, you help them refine their designs, and then you pay for the one you like the best. 99designs offers all kinds of marketing design, for example. You get an affordable email template, a banner ad, even wrap your vehicle. 99designs offers landing pages starting at just $299. You can start your next graphic design project for as low as $199. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 and you get a power pack of services for free valued at $99. Gives you more designer time, more attention, you'll get nearly twice as many designs. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 and we thank them for their support of Tech News Tonight. We now have Renee Ritchie, who's the editor-in-chief of iMore and regular on Mac Break Weekly with us. Hello, Renee. Wonderful to see you again. Wonderful to see you as well. So you're an Apple guy, so I'm just going to ask you. Apple already settled this lawsuit. They've got this FTC fine. At iMore, you wrote a little about Tim Cook's memo to employees. He didn't sound too happy about this whole thing being dredged up again. 
Yeah, he often comes off sounding more like a person than like the CEO of a company. It's like with the with the Department of Justice, they feel they're mistreated. And with the FTC, they feel like it's double jeopardy. Uh, it, on one hand, it's hard to feel bad for Apple because they're making this money back in probably eight hours today. I think that was the number I saw. <laughs> but on the other hand, it does feel... Apple is inventing new business with in-app purchase. No one had really done that before, and it's impossible to foresee all the consequences that can come initially. So I think, you know, it's it's we want to encourage that sort of thing, and we don't want to make companies hesitate and spend, you know, 13 years going through lawyers before they roll out new advancements to app purchasing. Well, what do you think has to happen in the App Store in order for Apple to be complying with what the FTC wants from it, especially since in-app purchases are kind of the big new money maker for apps? Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the top chart uh, in the App Store, almost every app in there is based entirely on in-app purchases. And I think Apple, in this case at least, they acted decisively from the beginning. They made changes to how passwords work. They made changes to parental restrictions. And I think a lot of what the FTC wanted, act Apple has actually already implemented. And that was probably one of the reasons Apple chose to settle this as opposed to the ebook case, because they didn't feel the conditions were onerous. They felt that they were things that they could, if they weren't already, they could easily comply with. All right, well, let's move on to the Google Play movies and TV app that's now in the App Store. Do you think, unless you're a huge Google enthusiast, which some people are, it somehow offers anything beyond what iTunes or Amazon's video library already give consumers? I can finally watch that copy of Transformers Dark Side of the Moon that came with my Nexus 7. I'm <laughs> thrilled. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is choice. I mean, you either get a vertical lock-in, which is you use the entire Apple platform, or you get a horizontal lock-in and you use Amazon services. You know, you stick with Amazon or Google and you use it across a wide range of services. The way the app is structured now, you can't do, you can't store things locally. You only get the SD version on the device. These are constraints that'll probably stop people from going whole hog on it immediately. But generally, I think the more choices we have is is better. And right now, everyone, Microsoft, Google, even BlackBerry are making apps for iOS and Apple is making apps for almost nobody. All right, Renee, thank you so much for joining us. Renee Ritchie, editor-in-chief over at iMore.com. We will see you on the inner tubes. Thank you, Sarah. You too. All right. Finally, how do you improve a webcam? Well, by giving it wheels, of course. The trouble is, so-called telepresence robots cost a lot of money in the thousands of dollars. But now a startup called Suitable Technologies is offering its Beam Plus product for the low, low price of $995. It's normally twice that, so it is a discount. Beam Plus is essentially a 10-inch tablet with a built-in webcam on wheels. It's controlled by the person on the other side of the video chat, so the effect is this disembodied head rolling around the house sticking its nose into everybody's business. And let's face it, that's a little weird. But if the price of telepresence robots keeps falling, they could become commonplace. I, for one, welcome our new grandma robot overlords. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I'd like to thank R Renee Ritchie for joining us. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next netcast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'll be there. I'm Sarah Lane. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.